Hi, I'm Ananya. I'm a junior content manager with Trip 101. Today we're meeting Chris and she's going to talk to us about her trip to Guatemala. This was not her first trip. It was one of many, but she's going to tell us about the latest one that she took. So welcome, Chris. We're very happy to have you here. And uh, we're excited to learn about this recent trip that you took to Guatemala. Please tell us more about yourself, your blog and your travels. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. So my name is Chris Davila. As you mentioned, I'm a travel blogger. I was the founder of Girl Takes Mundo, which is a travel blog that focuses on solo travel specifically for Latinas. But I cover an array of topics and an array of types of travel. I'm also a freelancer and I work on marketing, PR and events for an array of global brands. Oh, wow. So do you work mostly with travel brands? So because travel is your passion now. <laughs> related but some of the other brands are actually food and beverage because I do love a good cocktail while I'm traveling and I do love eating my way through a country or a city uh, sounds fantastic yeah how old is your blog uh, girl takes mundo so my blog is almost eight years old I started back in 2017 and the blog started by mistake. So I decided to take a sabbatical and felt that I would be bored during my six month sabbatical and that I probably needed to have something that I was doing. So my friend swayed me to journal about my travels online. And that's how Girl Takes Mundo became a travel blog. <laughs> so you were traveling during those six months a lot? Yes, I was. And surprisingly, even though I was never bored, because you're never bored when traveling, I still wrote about my trip because I wanted to let people know about my sabbatical and all the amazing places I was visiting. That's a great origin story for your blog. So tell us more about yourself as a traveler. Your blog is focused on solo travel for girls. Do you yourself also mostly travel solo? This is... It's a difficult one. I say, because for me personally, I find it hard to define the type of traveler I am. I don't see myself as just a solo traveler because I've been every type of traveler under the sun. I've been a backpacker. Of course, I've been a solo traveler, but I also do. I'm a flash packer. I do. I've done luxury travel. I travel a lot. I find that I will travel with friends and that changes the type of travel that I do. And I travel for work. I travel with family, which is the type of trip that I did to Guatemala. But yeah, I would say that I enjoy solo travel because I get the freedom to visit the places I want to do on my own schedule. But at the same time, I do every type of travel. <laughs> okay, so you're a versatile traveler. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I travel in any way, shape or form. As long as I'm traveling, I'm probably happy. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty great way to be <laughs> coming to the trip to Guatemala. So when did you go? How far back in time did you take this trip? Yeah, so this trip, we visited Guatemala in June of last year. And it was a 10 day trip, a good amount of time in a country. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned that you went with family this time when you went. Yes, correct. So for this trip, it was a family reunion. And we did a road trip in Guatemala, which brought my husband's family and my own family together doing the road trip. Oh, wow. Tell us more about your relationship with Guatemala, because this was not your first trip. So what made you go back <laughs> this time? It, maybe it was the family reunion, but how about your relationship with the country? Yeah, so as you may have hinted, my family is from Guatemala, but I was born and raised in Chicago. And so I have visited Guatemala many times throughout my life. It actually was the first country I visited. No surprise there. But even to this day, I still can't get enough of Guatemala. And as I said, we, we did this reunion trip last year. Okay. You said you, you went in June. So is June a good time to be in Guatemala? Yeah. So in terms of the weather, <laughs> what is often referred to as the land of eternal spring. 
And it really does live up to its name. It boasts really nice temperature year round, um, which makes it a really great destination to visit at any time of the year. So even during the rainy season, which is typically around July, the rain is usually mild and it doesn't impact travel. Oh, so June is a dry month though. Like when you went? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. June is pretty dry. I think during our trip, it rained only once and it wasn't even long enough for us to worry about it or it impact any of our travel plans. That's pretty great. In the 10 days that you were there, what you were taking a road trip. So how many locations did you cover during this time? Yeah. So we visited six and a half places. I say six and a half because one place was Guatemala City, but I don't really count it because you'll, and you'll hear it in my tips, Guatemala City isn't really a place that I technically do a stopover. So we only stayed one night before our flight. Oh, okay. And were both of these new locations or had you visited them before? Yeah. So we did decide to revisit some of our favorite tourist destinations. And some of the places that we did revisit as well were places that my family lives in. So they, they aren't tourist destinations, but they had to be visited because we have to visit family when we're in Guatemala. Yeah, because it was like a a vacation plus like a family reunion for you both tied together. So it makes sense. Correct. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm excited to deep dive into your trip and get to know what your uh, itinerary was like over these 10 days and six locations that you covered. So please take us through your journey. Yeah. So as I said to you, we decided to visit some of those favorite destinations. The Mm -hmm. first one was Antigua, which is one of our favorite of all. And it's one that a lot of tourists will start their trip in. It's the reason why we like revisiting is because it always has something new for you to see something new for you to do. And it's not that far away from the airport in Guatemala City. So I always recommend to people to land in Guatemala City and then just find your way to Antigua because Antigua (laughs) is just a 45 minute car drive. Lots of shuttles are available to get you to Antigua from the airport. And it's far nicer than Guatemala City. (laughs) Okay. And then we also visited La Guatitlan, and that's a must-see if you're visiting Guatemala. Like you, if it's your first time, it's you have to add it. And most of the blogs, most of the social media content around Guatemala is La Guatitlan. So just to paint you a picture, there are 12 towns that surround this lake. And we decided to stay in a town called San Pedro La Laguna. This time, because we have visited that La Guatitlan a few times during our multiple trips, but we decided to stay in the town of San Pedro La Laguna because we haven't visited that town before. So San Pedro La Laguna is known mostly as a lively party town. And its neighbor, San Marcos, is more chill and zen. So depending on what your type of vibe is, what type of trip you're trying to have, San La Guatitlan can provide a town for you based on the type of trip you want. Um, and then the other place that we visited was El Paredón. So this is becoming the next up and coming spa for surfing and beach bumming in Central America. And that was the first time we were actually visiting El Paredón because of the popularity it's gained in the last few years. Are you yourself a surfer? I am. So none of us are surfers, at least (laughs) to the best of my knowledge. But there is still so many fun activities to do in, in beach towns. So we did debate over trying surf lessons And then decided that because of the amount of time that we had, we just wanted to hang out in the beach, do Mm -hmm. boat, we took a boat tour to watch turtles, and then we pedal boarded in the mangrove. So we did all these other different activities and decided to save the surfing for another trip. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the last place that we visited was Quetzaltenango, which is a more indigenous but still metropolitan city in Guatemala. But Quetzaltenango is in the Highland Mountains, and it has these hot springs. 
So we were, we decided we wanted to visit the hot springs as well during this trip. So you were moving across various geographical terrains from a lake to a beach town to hot springs. Yeah. So that's the best thing about Guatemala is that despite it being a small country, you really do get an array of different types of unique cities and towns. So you can be in El Paredón in a beach. You can visit volcanoes in Antigua. You could hang out in hot springs in the Highland Mountains. You can be in a crater lake in La Guatitlan. You can go and be in the middle of a jungle visiting Mayan ruins in Tikal or go hang out in even more beaches in the north, which are next to Belize. It's so small, but it provides so many different type of vacation and adventures. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> and you were so across these uh, six locations that you were visiting, you were just driving across, stopping a day each, maybe? Or how was it? So we did about two, two to three days, depending on the location. And we rented a car, which made it the easiest and best way to get around so quickly th- to all of these destinations. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you started off with Antigua. So where, how long did you stay there? In Antigua, I feel like I should reference the itinerary I built out for <laughs> my family. Stayed there two and a half days, if I remember correctly. Ah, okay. <laughs> so quite a, quite a few days in Antigua because you love it so much. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So what all were you doing in Antigua? Yeah, so in Antigua, we visited the place that you see here, which is Obitonango, if I'm saying this correctly. And we also did a quad bike tour that visited a coffee plantation. That was a lot of fun. We also did a cooking class and learned to cook Guatemalan dishes as a whole family. And we were drinking wine. Then we got to enjoy the meal that we made. And it was just incredible. So what dish did you cook (laughs) in the cooking class? Yeah, so this was our second time. So for my husband and I, this was our second time cooking in this particular school. And so for this one, we made buñuelos. We made, if I remember correctly, pepian, which is this like green stew that had chicken but since I'm vegetarian I just left the chicken out (laughs) okay Um, and then we also cooked uh, oh what else did we cook there was five dishes see that my memory is so terrible especially with Guatemala because everything starts to morph in together (laughs) because I do remember that in one of the one of the cooking classes we cooked chuchitos which is this ball with meat inside and like a red sauce. And it's like a, not a doughy ball because it's made out of like corn maize. Let's see, what else did we make? We made rice for the stew, which is an art of its own, I feel. And there wasn't, yeah, there was two other dishes, but I cannot (laughs) remember. (laughs) Okay. I think because you have, yeah, as you said, you've done this a couple of times, so it's all starting too much. But yeah, I think you definitely enjoyed the food because that's visible from your face. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love Guatemalan food. I love food to begin with. I'm just a foodie. So any place I visit usually has to have some sort of food tour or a cooking class where I'm learning how to make dishes. Yeah. And it was a good activity for the entire family to do as well. Exactly. And I thought that because my it was my husband's family who is from the UK, this was just a great way to also introduce them and mm-hmm. have them dive deeper into my culture. Yeah. So how many of you were there on this trip together? There was 12 of us. 12. Oh, that's quite a big group. Yeah. Yes, it was a very big group. And there was obviously an array of guests from all ages. So it must have been a little bit tricky to find something that appeals to everyone. But I guess because you were moving across various locations, then it must have fell in place at one or the other. Absolutely. I had to plan the trip because obviously they said Chris loves to travel. So of course, she's the one that should 
plan this trip since she's the expert. And it took months. I think I started planning this in December and the trip happened in June. And Mm -hmm. it was a lot of different iterations to the itinerary. I did ask for input from the main families to say, what is it that you really want to visit? What are the top places that you want to see to try to craft an itinerary that would make everybody happy, that gave Mm -hmm. enough time for freedom to do certain activities that they wanted to do, but then pick a few activities that everybody was going to do together and schedule those. (laughs) Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And especially with 12 people, it must have been difficult. (laughs) I have planned different types of travel. So I do already know the type of pace of traveling that one's supposed to expect. I also craft travel for some of the companies that I work as a freelancer. And those trips have even have had over 40 guests. So a part of me was like, I can do big groups, I'm capable of doing it. It was just slightly different because it was family. And <laughs> family just changes that. <laughs> more room to get complaints. Exactly. Yes. They feel more at liberty to let you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad that you were able to do the trip and then everyone got to do what they wanted yeah there was a mix of both I knew they needed it (laughs) (laughs) let's go back to what you did after the cooking class so after the cooking class everybody was stuffed so we just (laughs) went back to the accommodation and I think later on in the evening we did like a small walk around Antigua Mm -hmm. but that was pretty much it yeah it was pretty much done after that cooking class (laughs) because people were so full (laughs) Was that the last day that you were at Antigua, the cooking clubs? No. So the day after was when we did the coffee tour with oh, the quad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> after Antigua, where did you go? So after Antigua, we went to El Paredón, which is the surf beach town. The beach town you were mostly, you mentioned mango paddle boarding and beach relaxing, all of that. So it was... That was the chill part of the vacation. Correct. Yeah, that was the more chill part of the vacation. We did a pedal boarding in the mangroves. It was like the first time for a few people, not for me. We went and saw turtles in the lake. We also saw So El Paredón is where you see the mangroves and the ocean combined. So we could see, we went to go see that division where they meet. We went and hung out in a lot of cool like cafes, uh, hung out in the beach uh, or poolside because the accommodation that we had had included a pool, which was really nice. Uh, Yeah, it was a lot of just relaxing and unwinding. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like fun. What was the destination after this? So once you were done with the beach town, where did you land up? Yeah, so after that, we drove to Quetzaltenango, and that's where we spent a few days and we went to go visit the hot springs in the Highland Mountains. We visited some of the more authentic villages where the indigenous people live. So that was really good to see the other side of Guatemala where more indigenous people are living and just how they live. So did you do some, did you sign up for some tours or did were you already familiar with where to go? So for Quetzaltenango, we decided just to walk around the towns, drive through the hot, the road to the hot springs. So this is the area where to visit the hot springs, you do need a good car. And I would say the roads aren't as great. They're a bit more windy as well. So it does just take a bit longer to get to any destination. So it's why I would personally recommend that if you do want to visit the mountains and like the hot springs, you base yourself in Quetzaltenango and then you take a, a tour to visit the hot springs because at least then it's an experienced driver it's somebody who's done it multiple times and i know they do offer day trips or half days um, to Mm -hmm. visit the hot springs because we had a car and we were obviously a large group we decided just to head to the hot springs ourselves and like i said i would definitely recommend if you are a smaller group to just grab a tour yourself 
Yeah, you were definitely an experienced traveler in that terrain, but yeah, he literates. I think this is more towards the interiors of Guatemala. So yeah, I think uh, for newer travelers, maybe a tour would be preferable in such circumstances. Absolutely. Yeah. For us, it was the second time we were driving. So the first trip that I did with my husband, he wasn't my husband at the time. We uh -huh. did also rent a car and we learned the hard way about some roads in Guatemala because we were going into places that were less, less traveled. I would say that all the places that we visited during this trip have really amazing road systems. So you won't have an issue if you rent a car to travel to El Paredón, to visit Antigua, to go to Quetzaltenango, but it's the moment, or to go even to La Guatitlan, it's the moment you start to venture off into the other parts of the outside of these areas, which is where the hot springs are located, where yeah. you do end up in smaller, narrow roads or unpaved roads. Yeah, so... Also, another thing is that when in Guatemala, when they are doing road construction, some roads will be closed and or there might they might turn something into one lane. And so travel might actually take longer than what your navigation app says, because the, they detour you to a different location mm -hmm. or they're only using one lane. So all the traffic is being geared into this one lane. Yeah, that's something which to be I think is for cautious everybody. about. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So how was your uh, experience at the hot springs? Oh, the hot springs were gorgeous. <laughs> super zen, super relaxing. There is something about the highland mountains in Guatemala that make you feel so at peace. And I just can't explain it. It you go and hang out in the cities and like it's Altenango and you feel the buzz of the city. You see the movements and vendors and people just walking around. And then you go to the highlands and it just changes the energy. You really do feel like you've reached like a Zen place. Uh, you can hear nature and you can, you're in the middle of the jungle. It's just amazing. You're deep within nature <laughs> over there. Yeah, you are. You definitely are. And I, the indigenous people know exactly why they find themselves in these more rural areas. I do think there is an energy in the mountains that you just can't explain. So you were in this area exploring Kizatanago and the highlands for about three days, you said? For two and a half. I feel like every place was about two mm. and a half because... Part of the trip included a visit to the town where my mom is from, which is okay. San Antonio La Paz. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you meet her there? Was, is she still living there? No. So my mom lives in Chicago. Everybody lives in Chicago. Oh. It's um, my mom's family. So some of our oh. cousins and uncles and aunts still live there. And yeah, and it was the town's yearly birthday party. And <laughs> okay. so... We aligned the trip to be to celebrate the town, which meant that it was three days, about three days of us attending celebrations and festivals and dances in the town, seeing their parade. Yeah, it, that felt <laughs> more authentic for us. It's where we would stay when we were growing up. So it felt like just returning home and hanging out with our family. <laughs> and partying with us. That's so great that your trip, of course, I guess you planned it that way, but it aligned with that celebration of the town where your mom is from. So what was next on your agenda once you were done yeah. with it? Yeah, after Quetzaltenango, we visited La Guatitlan, and that's where we went to San Pedro La Laguna. There it was going on a boat tour. So we hired a private boat tour to take us to different towns. During the day, we also did kayaking. They, Because it's a lively town, we aligned the trip to be during the weekend so we could go and hang out at some of the clubs that are in that town. And then we just walked around. So the town is very pretty and colorful. It has lots of gorgeous street art. So you could just... And then there was an option. We just didn't have enough time. But we did debate over going to San Marcos to visit uh, some of the more Zen places and go to the spas. 
but didn't have enough time for that. Okay. And it also okay. wasn't in the itinerary. So realist <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, we didn't plan for this, but if you think we can make all add that to the visit, I'm like, maybe we will. We <laughs> I think it made sense that since you were with family and you were a large group that you stayed in the party town instead of the quiet one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So what was next after that? Yeah, so the next stop was just the final place. It was, we ended up driving from San, actually not San Pedro. We have ended up driving from La Guatitlan to Guatemala City. And um, we returned the car rental. We, and then from there, we ended up just staying the night before our flight the next morning. Uh, okay, but it sounds like a fantastic trip that you had with your family and you visited so many spots. Sounds pretty great. Absolutely. Because we there was two t- two families, really, my husband's family and then my family that were traveling together. I wanted to make sure that we all got a really good mix of seeing the different towns and the different cities in Guatemala, getting to experience different activities. And so just tried to find that balance. Was there any, apart from San Marcos, was there any other part which was not on the itinerary? Was there anything else that you missed going to during this trip? I would say that for this trip, we covered all the places we wanted to visit that were in the itinerary. Lucky for me, I feel like I always have a growing list of places that I want to visit in Guatemala, but like I know that I'll return. So there is places like the crater Azul, which is the blue crater in the north that I'm hoping to visit that's been added to my list. I want to return to Livingston, which is more of a beach place as well in the north. And ideally, I would want to pair that trip to, with a visit to Belize, which is still on my list of places to visit. But because of the amount of time that we had and the amount of places that we want to see, I decided to focus on just the south of Guatemala for this trip. And then the next trip will most likely include all the places in the north that I'm still either want to return to or that I've added to the list. Makes sense. So you're explore as in with each trip, you're exploring more and more of the country. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I be, Even though it's a family destination for me, even growing up, my family always made it a point to include family time, but add that trip element to see different places. So Anytime we go back to Guatemala, we always add different cities or different activities, different places we want to see, because it's how we grew up. We never just went and stayed in the town where my mom is from or the city where my dad is and then just stayed there. That would be unreal for my family. I guess uh, every time adding that element of newness also keeps up the excitement and you want to keep returning. Exactly. I think they did well with that. Yeah. (laughs) It felt like a proper vacation every time you visit. Yeah. If you have to pick one thing, what would you say would be the was the best part of this trip that you took to Guatemala? Well, that's a hard one. I think the best part of my trip to Guatemala was just how welcoming locals are and just how each city has its own unique features. So you do feel like you're visiting a different place when you visit a new city or a new town in Guatemala. Like I said, despite its small size, if you close your eyes, you could think that you're in Europe where like it's super easy to travel in Europe to France and Italy and Austria and it all looks different. It's the same in Guatemala. You can visit different places and it looks different. And what's surprising is that it's one country and a very small country at that but yeah, and locals are super welcoming. They are willing to give you what they, the little that they have so that they make you feel at home and they are very friendly. They're curious as well. So yeah, that I think is the best part of my trip. Let's move on to the next section. Uh, would you like to share any tips or any advice with first time travelers to go? Yeah. So there's five tips I have. The first one is that, and as I hinted, everyone lands in Guatemala City. It's the capital of the country and it's like any other city. There's 
plenty of commerce. It has an array of neighborhoods from the poorest to the most upscale. And for that reason, I would skip and only stay in Guatemala City if you arrive at night and you can't find a way to get to Antigua, which, as I said, is a 45 minute car journey. Or if you have an early morning flight, you stay the night before in Guatemala City near the airport. The second tip that I would say is to learn basic Spanish. So while many people in tourist areas, there will be somebody that speaks English um, outside of those, that, it, those tourist areas, you might find it difficult to communicate with locals. But learning some basic Spanish phrases not only gets them excited, you, you'll be able to feel a little bit more like you're experiencing the country. And it'll make it easier for you to navigate as well. The other tip I would say, which is like the 2.0, 2B tip, <laughs> is to have Google Translate on hand. So even if you forget or you don't have enough time to learn basic Spanish, you can have Google Translate on hand, which I use in many of the countries I visit. And I find that it's one of the best ways to navigate a country if you encounter somebody that doesn't speak English. The third tip I have is that night does come sooner in Guatemala because there's light posts that have been placed in cities outside of Guatemala. And so from my experience, I'd recommend that you travel only during the day, just because if you do travel Anytime after five-ish, six-ish, including like the rainy season, nighttime does come faster. And so you might take a turn thinking that's where the navigation app has told you and you might get lost because you couldn't see the signs correctly or you weren't sure. And so to travel safer, travel more at peace, just drive during the day. And then my fourth app is that if you are driving in Guatemala, and from my experience, using Google Maps is not the way to go. So many locals are going to steer you away from Google Maps as the routes that they offer are not ideal. Google Maps will take you to a small sidewalk unpaved and tell you that's where you need to drive. I found out the hard way because my husband and I during our first trip used Google Maps. And we found ourselves in the middle of a farmed land where like the cows were all around us. And Google was like, yep, this is the way to go to get to La Guatitlan. And we're like, this can't be right. So don't use Google Maps. Instead, locals live by ways. And it's what we used during our last trip. Maps.me is also a bit better than Google Maps because if you are traveling without data but have a car, it does provide more concrete routes that obviously are actual roads and not this Google Maps that wants to save you 1.3 seconds by taking a farm <laughs> farmland. So yeah. And then my last tip is that with any destination, just avoid displaying valuables. Don't wear anything that would tempt somebody. I'm not saying that Guatemala is dangerous. And I know that some people think that. But all I'm saying is don't give somebody a reason to want something that you have. Don't be flashy. Don't go into areas where you probably shouldn't be. Stick to tourist destinations. Uh, yeah, like practice safety whenever you are in any destination. And it's the same with Guatemala. Those are all great tips. Yeah, especially the one about maps. Yes. When in doubt, in any country, just ask the local what map do they use to travel and navigate? Because the map they tell you is probably the more locally used map and the most accurate. <laughs> Yeah, no, it makes so much sense, especially I think the Google Maps, I think it's only accurate in very open spaces. And the moment it's like, even a little bit of a difficult terrain or hilly terrain, it just, it gets confused itself. So it definitely can't guide you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's um, coming to where you stayed uh, during this trip. Uh, let's talk about your accommodation. So how were you uh, navigating the terrain in terms of places to stay? Yeah. So since we were a large group, we rented out a lot of chalets or like full homes in each mm -hmm. of the destinations we visited. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there was one in Antigua and then each destination, you picked a different chalet for you for yourself. Correct. Okay. Correct. 
So how was your experience in each of these? It was amazing. For us, some of the key factors in the decision of the type of chalet that we wanted was that it needed to be close to the top attractions that we wanted to see. And we wanted to make sure that the homes that we rented out were able to accommodate all guests. So they also needed to be modern. They needed to definitely include parking since we had two cars that we rented for the large group. So for us, it was, is it modern? And some of the accommodation included washers and dryers. It included, like I said to you, a pool, which seemed very standard for a lot of the chalets in El Paredón. That seemed like every accommodation had a pool and was like a default, which was very. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to have one in a beach town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you had a good time at all the places that you stayed at. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I made sure that when I shared all of the suggestions for each destination, that the main decision makers of the trip were okay with it. So yeah. Out of all the chalets that you stayed at, was there anyone that stood out to you more or uh, you specially liked? Yeah, I would say specifically for me, I really enjoy the chalet in El Paredon because mm -hmm. I love the beach and I think it provided a lot of space for everybody to just hang out but not feel too cramped. It also provided staff, which I wasn't aware of. And so there was a two staff members who would come every day make sure the place was cleaned up for us. They would change our towels. One of the staff members would help us in the morning to plan some of the activities and would suggest places. So it really felt like a more high-end luxury experience mm -hmm. to have a team to help us during that portion of the trip. And I guess it makes more sense uh, when you're with a large group to have some kind of staff which takes care of your needs a little bit. Yeah, exactly. We weren't expecting it and we weren't there long enough to think that we needed it. But it was nice that we would go and do activities and we'd come back and things would just be cleared and that beds would be made and that like things around the pool had been set up, put aside. If we were drinking anything, dishes were cleaned and just felt like we were in a hotel without being in a hotel. <laughs> That's like the best deal that you can get. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Especially for a large group. <laughs> yeah. What about meals? Did uh, any of your accounts have meals or were you doing meals uh, separately? All of our meals we were typically just doing separate because the foodie that I am, I just wanted to go and try different places or I wanted to go try eat different types of food that I know I love eating in Guatemala. So it made it easier also for the group. For certain times, we would break up and say, oh, my sister who comes with children was like, oh, we're going to go get like more street snack food because the kids are dying for a pizza at this mm -hmm. point of the trip. And for others to be like, oh, I found this quirky ramen spot in the middle of Quetzaltenango. So we want to go try that out and see how their ramen stacks up compared to like our ramen back home. So things like that. That's great. Yeah. And then the group was dividing as per its own sort of food requirements and what they wanted to try out. Exactly. Depending on where in the trip we were, we would do meals together. But there was other times during the trip where we would say, actually, we're going to go eat here. Or, hey, we're going to go to eat. Do you want to go? And some people would be like, oh, I'm not hungry yet. And so, yeah. So apart from uh, the cooking class, was there any other sort of restaurant or uh, cafe that you visited together as a group and you really liked? Yeah. So we did a few of them. One of them, and I don't remember the name, was this restaurant near my mom's town that served more modern uh, food that wasn't like traditional. And it was a cafe. I can try to pull up the name of that restaurant. I always create a Google map with all the locations of places I either ate at or attractions or like the airport. So it makes it easier for me and also people who I share my maps with to see where they are, like the distance. It was called the Coral Coffee. 
And there is a few different locations in uh, Guatemala for this chain, but they offer really amazing food, uh, really tasty cafe items, gorgeous uh, restaurant settings. Like they, I think they pride themselves in their Instagrammable restaurant <laughs> because they are gorgeous. The other place uh, that we also went to all together was Playa Catorce. And it's a, it's in El Paredon. They have a kind of a beach, a poolside resort near the beach. So it's this amazing like patio restaurant that, and the Playa Catorce is connected to a local brewery in Guatemala. So they had beer flights of the different types of beer that they offer. So it was really cool to pair our food um, with the different types of beer with the backdrop of the beach and hang out in the pool as well. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I think with that, I have covered most of my questions that I wanted to know from you today. Is there anything else that you would like to share about your trip to Guatemala and that first time travelers should know? Yeah, I'd say just go and visit. Don't listen to people when they say it's dangerous. The tourist places, the tourist destinations are not dangerous. They make sure that security is there so that they can welcome tourists. And it's become such a popular city or a popular country for tourists to visit for an array of reasons because of the fact that there is just an array of activities that you can do in Guatemala and it is an affordable destination to visit. I would say people visit. It's uh, I know I'm biased because I'm from Guatemala, but it really is one of the best countries to visit. And I've heard it from multiple people. Whenever I say I'm from Guatemala, I typically will get people who are like, oh my God, I visited Guatemala and it was the best place I visited. And I always <laughs> respond with, I know I'm biased because I'm from Guatemala. So of course, to me, it is one of the best places that I have visited. And it's definitely on top of my list of places. And I have visited 80 countries. I have visited a lot of places and it still ranks very high because I always also take look at it from a tourist lens because I am a tourist when I visit places. And so I have visited all of these destinations as a tourist and love it. I mean, you know, I just love it. You made a pretty strong case for Guatemala. <laughs> and yes, I should. <laughs> I'd love to visit it someday myself. <laughs> You should. <laughs> but thanks so much, Chris, for taking us through your journey. It has been lovely listening to you. I hope that our viewers will find all the information that you have shared about your country useful. And they'll also plan their trips to Guatemala pretty soon. So thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And if they need any help, they just need to go check out my blog, girltakesmundo.com, or just slide into my DMs because I will gladly help them plan their trip as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool of you. Yeah. So with that, I will wrap up this session for today. Thank you so much. And we'll uh, close it now. Perfect. Sure.